Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Friday, May 10th. So today we have the busiest day of the week on our hands, meaning most of the aspects here this week have been between seven and nine different aspects. Today we have 14. And so we essentially doubled the energetic shifting, if you will, in one day. So that should be a good indicator that we're going to have a lot of scattered energy. It should be a good indicator that we're going to have a lot to process as far as emotions and ideas go. And because we are going to see the moon in Gemini go void, of course, at 9.50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and then lock into Cancer Energy, the moon's rulership at 11.14 p.m., we are definitely going to be all up in the fields later on in the day. Of course, the transition from Gemini Energy to Cancer Energy is always felt. We, for the most part, in the Gemini Energy are, you know, lighter, more vibrant, more optimistic definitely a lot going on in the mental plane but when we dive into that cancer energy we move all up in the feels we become a little bit more introverted from the extroverted mood and attitude that we were in with that gemini energy we're a little bit more withdrawn with the world around us we want to stay home we want to kind of eat comfort foods do whatever is tried tested true and familiar the cancer energy has us in a semi-defensive, semi-protective type of mode because the foundation of our emotions are changing. And because we're on the peak precipice of change, especially in our physical realms, the cancer energy is just going to make us kind of hold on to what once was. We're very connected to the past with that cancer energy. And again, our intuition is coming online in a much stronger way in the cancer energy. And so everything is just a little bit overwhelming, a little bit overstimulating. And we're definitely going to have to kind of hunker down in isolation mode for the most part in order to gain our bearings. So again, the majority of the day is with the moon in Gemini energy. So again, still processing different thoughts, different ideas, different perspectives, different opinions, if you will, different plans, different strategies that we are currently percolating on in anticipation to make some big moves. But the minute that we shift into that cancer energy, we are going to press pause. We are again going to kind of block out the, let's call it futuristic visions and ideas that we were very excited about with the moon and Gemini. We're going to block that out. We're just going to try to kind of focus on the present moment, on bringing ourselves a little bit of comfort, a little bit of familiarity before the major changes happen. Because again, the changes have to happen in the inner realm between our heart and our head before we can gauge the physical body to take action and make moves out in the physical realm. And so the next couple of days with the moon in Cancer, definitely going to be hypersensitive, a little moody, a little bit all over the place in our inner realm of emotion. But when we come out of it, we're going to have a new foundation that we're going to be operating off of. We're going to come around to the changes, to the ideas that we've been percolating on. We're going to be more open and optimistic as we dive into the Leo energy that, of course, the moon will be edging into after the Cancer energy has run its course. So again, 14 different aspects taking place here today. 12 of them are going to involve the moon. The moon, still very much in Gemini energy, going to make an awkward interaction with Pluto, the great transformer who is retrograde in Aquarius energy. This is air on air action. Gemini, of course, immutable air sign, Aquarius energy, a fixed air sign, which means that there's a lot going on in our mental planes. There's a lot of thoughts. There's a lot of processing. The Gemini energy has us kind of divided between different choice points, very extreme and polarized different choice points points. The Aquarius energy, on the other hand, has us kind of operating from the greater, grander perspective of the observer. And of course, we are hyper-focused on what we can do to be better, to improve our lives, if you will. But 
Pluto's whole retrograde in Aquarius energy is about illuminating the power struggle that goes on within us, especially between the old egoic programming and the new programming that we're trying to kind of plant in due to the higher self, having new observations, having a new mission and purpose. But the power struggle is very real, especially where the mental plane is concerned. That's where that Gemini energy is kind of highlighting the back and forth of the pros and cons and the constant bickering going going on in our headspace, in our heart space, trying to find that sweet spot. Now there is going to be a major shift, major change, major transformation in our thought process, in our perspective, in our ideas, but not until we kind of feel the squeeze, feel the pressure building in this choice point, in this decision point that right now we're not feeling so comfortable in making. The moon is then going to get in the boxing ring, fight it out with Saturn. Saturn's the Lord of Karma. He rules over roles, responsibilities, system structures, foundations, willpower, and discipline. He is in Pisces energy, again, trying to close the door on the last 30 years of old, outdated belief systems, old visions, old, let's call it structures of our lives. The moon entering into the boxing ring with Saturn, again, going to amplify the choice points. There is a huge anchoring in of the old version of self, the old egoic programming that is quite loud with the chatter inside of our headspace at this point in time, trying to convince us to just settle that, you know, the major changes that we're looking to make, not worth it. We're not prepared. We're not well equipped to do so. We don't have what it takes. And Saturn, of course, is going to give us a little bit of a harsh reality check on where it is that we got to stop being whiny complainers and actually boss up to the new roles and responsibilities that this new karmic chapter is actually offering us. A lot of the time, the thing that we are currently kind of praying for can be reached by doing the hard things. But many of us want to take the easy way out. And of course, there is no reward system for doing things the easy way, especially where, you know, we are emotionally processing new thoughts, new ideas, new perspectives on past situation circumstances and scenarios that are no longer serving this higher self might have been part of the old version of self's identity, but we're trying to close the door on that particular aspect. So this push and pull, again, going to be harsh, going to be, you know, letting that negative Nancy narrative in. Uh, but at the same time, this is creating pressure and tension and conflict in order for us to choose, choose a side, decide what side of self we're actually going to be spending as much energy and attention on trying to build up, anchor in and put into power. The moon is going to make a positive interaction with Mars. This is definitely going to help kind of break us out of that funk. Mars being the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire. He's in his rulership in Aries energy, ready to jump into new things, ready to take action and make moves, ready to kind of just start swinging that sword and allow that sword to cut through any blockage, any obstacle that may be holding us back from initiating a brand new path a brand new direction, a brand new chapter. This particular interaction is beautiful because the Gemini energy is an air energy. And of course, Aries energy is a fire energy. And when you combine air slash oxygen and fire slash passion, what you get is some really creative ideas. What you get is a brand new spark, brand new fire, brand new flame that is being fueled off of passion, off of desire, off of inspiration, off of excitement, and in some cases, off of anger and frustration. If that is the fuel that you are choosing to use at this time to kind of inspire and motivate you to make the changes that you are resisting and actually making. The moon makes a positive interaction with the sun. The sun, of course, still shining a bright light in Taurus energy. The opportunity, the options, if you will, to make great changes in our physical realm, starting with the way that we feel about ourselves, growing in self-worth, self-respect, self-love. That overflows into our relationship dynamic. That translates into I'm going to call it monetary currency from the energetic currency that we are paying to ourselves. And so anytime the moon and the sun are coming together, there's a new aha moment. There's a new emotional awareness. And because the moon is in Gemini energy doing this back and forth, this pro and con dance, 
on what it is that we actually want to be choosing for ourselves, there is likely going to be an aha moment illuminated on where it is that our heart space from that Taurus energy is going to kick in. Because again, Venus rules over the Taurus season. Venus is in her rulership in Taurus energy. And so there's going to be this heart activation to realize where it is that, I guess what, our heart knows the choice that we need to be making, the path that we need to be choosing, the decision that we need to be arriving at. It's our head space right now in this Gemini energy doing the teeter-totter back and forth that hasn't quite caught up to where it is that our heart space already knows the answer. So this is gonna be an aha moment, this is gonna be an epiphany, and this is gonna help us lean closer towards one path, one direction, one decision that our heart essentially has already set itself upon. The moon is then going to sextile Chiron, the wounded healer, also in this Aries energy. And so Aries energy and Gemini energy light something up. Again, think of oxygen and a campfire. And so emotionally speaking, we're seeing a lot of growth. We're seeing a lot of, I'm going to say, opportunities for us to be choosing the new path, the new ideas, the new direction, the new version of self. Again, really kind of, again, consciously being aware of the inner narratives bouncing back and forth. The ego is wanting to keep us in a fear state of paralysis. The higher self is wanting us to kick that ego programming to the curb. When you feel excited or inspired or called, that is your higher self. When you feel negativity and concern and insecurities and fear-based reactions, that's your ego self. And so Chiron being the wounded healer, this is a sextile, there's a merging of energies, which means that the narrative that we are choosing at this particular point in time is the higher self narrative. And the more we continue to choose the higher self, the less power the egoic programming is going to have over us. The moon then makes a very positive interaction with Uranus, the great awakener in this Taurus energy. And I actually love this because it's a jolt to our nervous systems. It's a pep in our step. It's a positive interaction, which means that there is an epiphany. There is an aha moment. There is a light bulb going off on what it is that we want to do differently, what it is that we could possibly try, where it is that we could deviate off of the mundane path in which we've been walking to at least dabble in different options and different opportunities. This is going to open up not only our heart space, but our heads space in trying to think about the different options and opportunities that we now figure are available to us in order to see how the physical body is going to react to some of those potential thoughts and long-term visions. The moon is then going to sextile Mercury. This is a beautiful interaction because, of course, our heart space, the moon, and our head space, Mercury, they're on the same page. They're working together. Now, again, Mercury rules over the Gemini energy that the moon is in. Mercury is currently in this Aries energy. So, again, we get air and fire. There's a new spark. There's a new excitement. There's a new aha moment. There's a new mood. There's a new attitude that we are really kind of building in and cultivating. We're trying to, again, hold that energy level very strong so that we can continue to work on the plans, the strategies that we are essentially going to be acting upon in the weeks to come. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Pluto. So Pluto, again, is coming in to empower us, to show us where it is that we have the opportunity to boss up, where it is that we have the opportunity to take power and control over our lives, and in this case, over our mental plane. Because that Gemini energy, again, representing the twins, has us going back and forth and up and down in order to find that sweet spot. And so we have been kind of seeing an increase in our mood, in our attitude, attitude in the spark in the vision that you know did pop off earlier in the day this particular interaction between the moon and pluto is just putting us in a very excitable type of mood again empowering us to see that the options the choices the decisions available to us now we really have the power to either continue to do what it is that we've been doing and settle for what it is that we've already got or branch out try something new experiment explore and see the different kind of results that we are going to get from breaking out of the same old same old 
The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Jupiter. Jupiter, of course, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings. He's in this Taurus energy. It's been a very slow, steady increase to change. Now, this takes us back to May 2023. We only have a couple of weeks left of Jupiter in this particular energy before shifting into Gemini energy. That's going to be a totally different ball game. Right now, Jupiter is helping us to build in our confidence, in our optimism. He's reassuring to us that we have gone through the ringer in the past. We have learned the tough love life lessons that we are able to use and integrate in this present moment to cut out a kind all the fluff. You know, a lot of times when we're trying to jump into something new and, and start something new, even if it's as small as a routine, it's foreign to us. There's not a comfort level there. It's not a routine yet. You have to do something for at least 28 days before it becomes a familiar routine to the physical form, let alone the mind, body, and soul. And so we are really kind of resisting making the changes that we're having to make because it's uncomfortable, because it's not familiar, because it feels foreign to us. And so this is just like us kind of reassuring ourselves that we've been through worse. We've made much greater changes with less thought, with less planning, with less strategy, and it worked out. And yes, there has been some previous previous instances and experience in our lives where things didn't go the way that we had planned, but we're kind of gaining perspective from those particular experiences. Again, integrating that wisdom and knowledge in the here and now and building towards an action point. The moon then goes ahead, makes a positive interaction with the North Node in Aries energy. This again is Gemini energy, air energy, and Aries energy is fire energy. So another spark but this time, thinking about our long-term goals, our long-term visions, our long-term plans. That North Node in Aries energy is trying to get us on the right path to complete our soul's mission, to reach our soul's potential and purpose. It is an individual quest that we have to kind of get going on here. But emotionally speaking, we are feeling that we have grown. We have kind of healed certain aspects within us, especially where the egoic programming has kept us in a state of fear and doubt and insecurity. We've kind of squashed that for the moment. We're allowing the higher self narrative to kind of take over. And because of that, we're very optimistic we're very confident about the plans, about the strategies that we're currently percolating on, that we're, you know, piecing together. We're feeling good about the long-term vision, goal, and dream. Now, here's where things get a little bit interesting. 8.22 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger, is going to semi-square, so it's not as major as a, as a square would be, but still tension and conflict with Uranus, the Great Awakener, in this Taurus energy. So first of all, this is a, we're going to call it challenging aspect. It can be very challenging depending on where it is that we're at in our energy management. First of all, this is going to trigger a lot of ants in our pants, okay? Um, it, the, the lack of patience is very strong with this particular interaction. We have to kind of remember that Mars is ruling over our physical body, our drive, our passion, right? Uranus, the great awakener, he sent lightning bolts down from the higher forms of intelligence in order for us to have a, let's call it central nervous system response to new ideas, new visions, new goals, new dreams. So potentially we are creating a little bit of a shit storm of anxiety or anticipation or rest Restlessness or ants in our pants, whichever way you want to look at it. Because of this, and again, we're always being tested on whether or not we have the ability to override our egoic programming, but the egoic programming could definitely lead us into conflicts. Why? Because we're agitated, we're frustrated, we have ants in our pants, there's no action to take, we're a little bit jittery, and that may get projected out into the world. It could lead to, you know, being short with people and therefore leading to a little bit of a spat. It could lead to impulsive behavior behaviors that of course isn't going to be well received by the people around us and because we're going through this very interesting adjustment period with the new version of self the old version of self still feels very much attached to the present moment to the here and now and we're feeling a little bit trapped we're feeling a little bit blocked we're feeling a little bit restricted 
Why? Well, first of all, we have Saturn in Pisces. So if that wasn't a huge indicator, I don't know what is. But also, you know, we've been waiting months to have major moves be presented to us for us to take action upon. We finally have Mars in his rulership in Aries energy. He's rearing to go. And yet there's still no moves to be made. And so we're gaining a little bit of frustration from the impatience that we're currently having. And especially if there's a certain, let's call it topic and theme going on in your life right now that you do feel trapped or blocked or restricted or limited from actually, you know, moving through or resolving, that is going to be a high point of agitation and frustration underneath this particular aspect. So we just want to, you know, we want to be further ahead. We want to be further along than we actually are. And again, just a reminder that we're exactly where it is that we need to be. It's the egoic programming that anticipates that we should be somewhere that we're actually not right now. But again, that's a whole mind F situation within itself. Just understand that this particular interaction is definitely going to ruffle some feathers, going to put us in a situation to, again, keep ourselves in check with energy and emotional management. And we don't want to project our instability out into the world and on other people. Now to add a little bit more fuel to the fire, but this is a, a different kind of fuel. So just like stay with me here. Um, a couple minutes later, and I'm talking like six minutes later, um, Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She's in her rulership and Taurus energy. She is going to semi-square. So again, tension and conflict with Neptune. Neptune is in his place of power in Pisces energy. Neptune is the higher octave of Venus, whatever it is that we can imagine, whatever it is that we're downloaded with, whatever it is that we can visualize, we can bring to life through Venus because she rules over the physical form. She is how we give birth to the ideas, to the creativity that Neptune downloads us with. But here's the thing, Neptune and Venus semi-squaring in this way is going to create a little bit of a distraction slash delusion. And here's what I mean by this. First of all, we kind of live in Delulu land with Venus and Neptune interacting in this way. And because we're living in Delulu land, we have a tendency to kind of focus on what it is that we want to see instead of actually accepting things in the way that they actually are. And so there's a tendency to, first of all, just kind of gloss over the problems that are currently, you know, unfolding in our lives. Because again, when you live in Delulu land, it's only rainbows and butterflies. There are no issues. There are no problems. So we have a tendency to put the 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 vision goggles on if you will and we're only focused on the things that we like that make us feel good that make us feel you know hopeful and often the peripherals of course it's just an absolute shit storm but we're, we're choosing not to look at that right now and so there's this element of imagination that kicks in and let me just say that imagination when you're focusing in on the let's call it best case the best case in scenario that is imagination, you know, working for us, taking us on the path of positive manifestation. However, if you're imagining the worst case scenario, first of all, that's called anxiety. OK, and that is setting you up to manifest the worst case scenario. So, again, your attention and what you allow to take place in your headspace is going to dictate the physical realm reality that you're going to be experiencing. But we have a tendency with this particular interaction between Venus and Neptune to either imagine the best case or worst case scenarios. And here's the thing, neither best case or worst case scenario is ever going to happen. There's going to be a version of the truth, a version of the reality that will manifest somewhere around the middle of both the best and worst case that you could possibly imagine. And so, you know, the truth is elusive at this point because we're not looking for truth. We're looking for delusion. We just want to make ourselves feel good. And so here's the thing is that in our efforts to make ourselves feel good, we're recognizing where it is that we're going out of our way to delude ourselves at the fact that there are some real situations going on in our lives right now that don't feel so good. And when we realize the parts that aren't feeling so good, suddenly we get stuck in that especially where relationships are concerned. We could have a huge blowout within ourselves, not even arguing with people around us. We could have a huge blowout within ourselves where suddenly we don't even see our worth anymore. We don't see what the point is. We don't see how, you know, we're ever going to get out of this situation. 
we kind of get down on ourselves and because of this little delusional state of trying to avoid the worst parts of our current reality we're making a over exaggerated situation circumstance and scenario that isn't even rooted in reality and so however far you want to take this that's up to you because understand that you could be your own worst enemy in this situation you also have the ability to be your best friend and of course as much as we would all like to strive to be our own best friends and to you know focus on the good and focus on the positives sometimes you know the heaviness the weight the funk just cannot be avoided and then we lose ourselves in that dark pit so whichever way you kind of find this particular energy manifesting for you just understand that it is a imaginary version of life and that it is not true whatever you tell yourself even if you're telling yourself all kinds of good things um, they're not going to manifest in the way that you hold in your imagination and so again whether you use your energy and attention for good or for evil that's up to you but understand that it's an over exaggerated instance and will not manifest either in the good way or the bad way in which you are currently imagining so to add on top of those two very intricate aspects, the last aspect that we actually have the moon in Gemini making, again, 9.50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're getting into the boxing ring, we're squaring it out with Neptune in this Pisces energy. You want to talk about uh, bouncing from what currently is matter of fact, logical, practical versus what is imaginary, what is just a Lulu. This is the best case scenario, okay? We're getting in the boxing ring and we're fighting it out because the Gemini energy is so rooted in the egoic experience of the materialistic realm that we have a hard time seeing the forest past the trees. We are only focused on the proof, the evidence that is currently in our faces and that's what we're kind of justifying our ability of breaking out of this mundane, same old, same old into new options and opportunities off of. While Neptune, of course, in this Pisces energy knows that you have to hold a vision. You have to have hope and faith and wishes and dreams that, you know, kind of transcend, if you will, the physical realm. That is how we break out of certain patterns, certain loops, certain behaviors. And so we're fighting it out right now. It's basically logic and practicality versus, let's call it, in intuition and imagination. And so somewhere in that particular struggle within ourselves, we are going to strike a happy middle ground and it is likely going to come out of mere frustration of just, you know, not being able to make sense of the physical realm and yet not quite making sense out of the metaphysical realm either. So there is going to be an aha moment. There is going to be a shift in our mood and our attitude because, again, it's at this particular point in time that the moon is going to go void, of course. While the moon is void, still in this Gemini energy, we are going to semi-square Venus. So again, Venus and Neptune just had their little kerfuffle. Then the moon and Neptune had their little kerfuffle. And now the moon and Venus are having their little kerfuffle. And let me just say that we're not going to be on the same page between our heart and our head with this particular aspect. We are essentially talking ourselves out of a lot of the things that we were sure about. And we are essentially uh, talking ourselves into uh, just staying the same and just not making the changes and not expressing our thoughts and not expressing our feelings and just kind of just staying silent and staying, you know, keeping everything the same old, same old. And let me just say, this is a perfect segue, although it is semi-damaging and destructive, this is a perfect segue to have the moon move into Cancer energy at 11.14 p.m. Because again, the resistance to change, the hesitancy to change, the want, need, and desire to continue to hold on to the past and keep things exactly as they've been is very strong with the Cancer energy. And so over the next couple of days, we're going to have we are going to be put in particular aspects and positions to really illuminate where it is that we're again we're blocking ourselves where again we are self-sabotaging and those two key indicators that i just spit out is very relevant or relevant should i say 
to Pluto's retrograde. Because again, Pluto's retrograde in Aquarius energy is supposed to be highlighting the power struggles going on within us. We know where we can be better. We know where we have areas to improve. We know the sectors of our lives that need to make some serious changes in order to free and liberate us from the blockages and the restrictions and the limitations that we've already identified that we're stuck in. But yet, there's a part of us, that old egoic programming, that just wants us to do the same old, same old. So the power struggles are going to be illuminated. We are going to sit in the funk. We are going to resolve that funk. And we are going to push ourselves into making those changes by the time the moon shifts out of Cancer energy and moves into Leo energy here in a couple of days.